The Global Caregivers Network presents the first annual Global Male Caregivers Summit coming your way April 13th, 2024, beginning at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Register on Eventbrite to hear from the most amazing and powerfully inspiring men as they share caregiving from the male perspective. Grab your ticket today and we'll see you there. Thank you. My name is Dr. George Ackerman. I want to thank first Cheryl Mims and the Global Caregivers Network, uh, LLC, for putting on this amazing summit. I didn't realize that caregiving, male caregivers, was actually rare or even an issue. So when uh, Cheryl approached me, I was just honored to be a part of it. The society really needs to change, in my view. Uh, men have to speak up. We all have a voice. And I want everyone to know you're never alone in this fight. My mother unfortunately passed, as Cheryl mentioned, on 1 1 2020 due to Parkinson's disease. It's one of the toughest battles I've ever seen, uh, whether it's my mother, who is my best friend, or for anyone to have to go through. Uh, I went from a career, my background again is law enforcement, uh, policing, uh, the law. I aided uh, my whole life, I've dedicated to helping family members of homicide victims. So I felt a lot of the time, unfortunately, the family members in the criminal justice system, they lose a loved one, they're forgotten by society or the criminal justice system. And I correlate, unfortunately, today to the Parkinson's disease community. A lot of the time, they're often forgotten. Uh, thankfully, last December was the first bill ever introduced and passed unanimously the United States House of Representatives. It's called the National Plan to End Parkinson's Disease. So if you are in the U.S., please reach out to your senators and urge them to sponsor or to uh, uh, approve and jump on the bandwagon for the passing the National Plan to End Parkinson's Disease. Today, uh, I advocate in memory of my mother, but also for everyone out there with Parkinson's disease, dementia, or really uh, all different diseases, because we need to end them all. Something that was very important to me, uh, my, today I don't feel I'd be the man I am if it wasn't for my mother's sacrifices. She was a very independent, caring uh, mother. She uh, had Parkinson's for 15 years, and unfortunately, she didn't really want to burden our family, so she didn't mention it much. So I knew what the word Parkinson's was, but I had no clue what it could do to someone. We were always told uh, in reality that you don't die of Parkinson's, you die with it. But my mother passed at young, 69 years old, and she really never had any other medical issues. So today, again, it's very important that I try to reach those who are not caregivers in Parkinson's and people who are not diagnosed, because unless we have everyone on board this uh, ship, we're, it's going to be further from a cure. So again, I'm grateful for the opportunity today. I also wanted to bring up caregiving. Uh, I didn't take a course on how to be a caregiver. I don't even know if there is one. If I did take it, if it would even help. I was never prepared for what Parkinson's disease can do. Uh, and also, unfortunately, she had late onset dementia. Just a quick uh, little note, Parkinson's disease. My mother had a little stiffness in her left arm for several years, but it didn't get really bad until the last four when that's when I was really thrown into the world of caregiving. I didn't even really think about what the word caregiver was until I had to step up and help my mother. Uh, Parkinson's is different, unfortunately, for every person. So what happened to my mother in our journey doesn't mean it'll be the same for another individual. That's why we still don't have a cure. We're not sure what causes Parkinson's disease. We think it could be environment like pesticides, the water, there's famous lawsuits, unfortunately, like Camp Lejeune out there and a Paraguay, which is actually banned in China, but not in the United States. So we have to reach out to our legislators. And this is a great summit because it gives an opportunity for you, uh, all the speakers and you, the listeners, to share this. Uh, please urge, again, your local representatives to get involved to help end Parkinson's disease. Caregiving, to me, is something that I have a lot of pride in. Again, my mother sacrificed a lot of her life. She was a school teacher. She uh, had a master's degree, but she gave it all up to take care and raise me and my brother. So I knew that uh, when she needed help, uh, my time to be there was definitely going to be uh, one that I wanted to be there to support her, care about her. Some of the major challenges though, as a caregiver, specifically male, as we're here all gathered today, is really that you can't, as a male, my mother was female, 
She didn't have a husband at the time, didn't have any real support, but me and my family, but I couldn't go into, you know, the bathrooms. I couldn't go into the specific private areas that a female wants privacy. I mean, the problem is Parkinson's disease does, doesn't define a person, but it does unfortunately debilitate people. It's the fastest growing neurodegenerative disease in the world. Unfortunately, I'm hearing more and more people, not they might not get it, but now their neighbors are getting it, their cousins or uh, somebody like the truck driver. And it can debilitate you so badly that you have to end your career. Uh, Parkinson's also, if you know the famous uh, movie star, Michael J. Fox from Canada, I had the opportunity to meet him recently. And you'll see more external tremors. So some of the signs, again, are tremors. So it's sometimes internal, sometimes it's external, very noticeable. It's uncontrollable shaking, which unfortunately, again, is very hard to even manage uh, a life. So we had to hire a staff of people, which cost about $12,000 a month. And that was just to have someone there really to watch over her so she wouldn't fall. Because as a caregiver and a son, I didn't want her to harm herself uh, on top of the dementia that came late and on top of the Parkinson's. So you can see as a male caregiver or any caregiver, some of the uh, obstacles, but I, the kind of person who might make a list and you check off each possibility. And even sitting here today, I don't have any regrets except we didn't find a cure, but I did, there's nothing I could have really done to change it. My goal though was to be by my mother's side and comfort her, care about her. As I just actually put out uh, my first book on this area, it's called A Son's Journey from Parkinson's Disease Caregiver to Advocate. So today, as I speak with you all live, I believe in advocacy. I find that there are many out there who don't have a voice, unfortunately, whether they pass due to Parkinson's and their caregivers or people who are today struggling and their caregivers, you know, they have uh, daily activities, things in life. And sometimes they don't even know that people like all of us are out there fighting for them. Uh, so that's very important. My own health as a male caregiver suffered greatly. I don't regret that part, but I do uh, wish I had taken care of myself. Even today as an advocate, I don't really follow my own path, which is to take care of yourself. You're only as good as a caregiver if you are healthy yourself. So that means diet, nutrition, uh, possibly eating healthy. At some point, though, I was you know, getting calls due to the dementia that also set in late with my mother. And I was getting calls all hours, uh, whether 4 a.m., uh, 2 a.m., and she was in fear of her life because she thought that the uh, caregivers or the person watching over her while I was at work or with my family might be harming her. So I had to actually install video cameras. Obviously, I didn't put them in any private places, but thankfully, I was able to monitor my mother and make sure she was always safe. Uh, those are some of the struggles that I could tell you in my book. I write really from the good, the bad, and the ugly of caregiving. Uh, thankfully, I had incredible support. My wife, my three children were always there to support me. My mother was also, and my wife, best friends. Cover of our book is actually a picture of my mother and me dancing at my wedding, which was one of the most touching and memorable days uh, of my life because Parkinson's uh, disease might take over a person, but it can never take our memories away. And that's one of my honestly favorite memories ever. And even talking about it sometimes is not easy. I always joke and say I'm 6'2", 200 pounds in, in law enforcement, but being a male caregiver, caregiver and talking about my mother is not always the easiest. Uh, par Parkinson's disease is a horrible disease. It also could bring dystonia, which is the crawling of the toes and really destroy stomach, the individual stomach from all the medicine. But I advocate again today in her memory and all those caregivers still fighting today for their loved ones that are diagnosed and specifically Today, again, we're highlighting male caregivers. So always feel free to reach out to me. You're never alone, whether you're a caregiver or you're someone diagnosed. We started together for Sharon.com because I just want to remember my mother. Actually, we're not a foundation. I'm just a son uh, who lost his lo a loved one, my mother, who was my best friend. So when I was a caregiver, I was completely lost. There was stuff out there. I didn't know how to find it. We started together for Sharon.com just to have resources. It tells our journey. We do not accept money. Uh, I don't want anything from anyone except you to know that we love you. Uh, we send our support and you're never alone in this fight. I'll advocate for you along with Cheryl and all my incredible colleagues here speaking. So please listen to their speeches, uh, share their speeches. They're all incredible uh, heroes in my view in, in the male caregiving field. 
And again, remember, you're never alone in this fight. Please jump on to the, the Senate, contact your senators if in the U.S., and ask them to support the national plan to end Parkinson's disease. I actually interviewed United States Senator Rick Scott the other day, and we talked about the importance of ending this disease and really all everybody coming together. It's bipartisan, so we shouldn't really have an argument over, uh, you know, whether it's this or that. It's all just to end Parkinson's. And on the final note, we love you. We support you. We care a lot about you, and you're never alone. I will advocate for you, and together our voices are so much stronger. And I always say I'm just starting because every day I meet another individual speaker here or see somebody still going through this uh, Parkinson's. It re-motivates me and to really just get back right out there. And again, so honored to have had the time today to speak with you. Please follow and share this all day with some incredible speakers. And I'm so grateful for Cheryl and the organization for allowing me this time today. So thank you. And again, I'm Sharon's son, George. Feel free to look at togetherforsharon.com and you'll see our journey just being told. So thank you again and sending love to everybody today. The Global Caregivers Network presents the first annual Global Male Caregivers Summit coming your way April 13th, 2024, beginning at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Register on Eventbrite to hear from the most amazing and powerfully inspiring men as they share caregiving from the male perspective. Grab your ticket today and we'll see you there.